All right. So I decided to not make all of this lab so difficult for for uh, for seventeen, and because of that, today I will help you just with getting started with the board. If some of you already have the board, that will be super cool. Uh, if not, then watch carefully and. Uh, and use it when you get it. So probably you will you have to get bored in between a couple of days. So let me I will start the screen sharing and I will start the software. Okay. So this, this is only get uh, when we have the software running. Uh, now for the for this situation, let's create a new project. New project wizard we have. Um, so next, then we have to specify the correct location because this is the correct location. And let's call it the uh, first full project. First implementation. So I will call this project also the first implementation. Um, yeah. So today we will go through with uh, the simulation, how to set up the correct simulation, and also how to put the software, um, put the configuration on the on the Atlas SOC FPGA SOC. So I'm clicking next, and I'm going to the board, and this is the board we have: Atlas SOC B0. So I, if I now thing is um, if I directly select this SOC, I I will uh, not have to specify the pinouts myself. What I can do also is I can uh, take the name of the device, name of the SOC itself, and select it from here. If I select it from here, then I have to specify that. This pin, this particular pin of this SOC is connected to uh, LED, for, for instance, or something else, it's buttons, switches. So I have to specify all those pinouts if I pick it from here. On the other hand, if I directly specify which development board we have, this is already uh, prepared for us. And then, uh, Mark this check, uh, chat box that create top level design file. So this will create a very log file that have all the inputs and out output pins already listed. Next, uh, here we have to select the simulator, uh, Modulus Simultera. And finish. Now I created uh, the project. It will be ready in a couple of seconds. So I'll delete these comments there. And this is the top level verlog uh, file that was marked to create. So this is all the inputs we have. So we have three clocks, all of them are 50 uh, megahertz. Uh, they, we have three clocks because uh, they're, I mean, they are coming from three different locations on a physical locations on FPGA, on uh, FPGA part of SOC. So in SOC have an FPGA part and have the microcontroller part. So these all three clocks are connected to FPGA. And uh, 
um, they are physically located in different parts of that FPGA. So some uh, registers can be can use this FPG, this clock because they are closer, and some can use that one because they are closer. So let's let's uh, just to understand why we have three FPGAs, three clocks. Then we can delete the unnecessary part at this moment, but in the end we have GPIO inputs, but we don't need it right now, so we will delete it. There is also Arduino shield connector. So this 16 bits is for connecting Arduino shields to this uh, SOC. And there are a couple of others, so we delete that. So I have I have one clock right now. Key buttons, LEDs, eight of eight of them, and uh, four switches. So let's experiment this. Um, let's now create what's the design, then uh, set up the simulation, simulate. And then implement it on FPGA. Now, for that purpose, we can uh, we can have very simple uh, very simple code. For instance, assign LED three to zero equals to uh, SW. So this value of those switches will be copied into lower part of these LEDs. So four switches we have. So four LEDs will be uh, will be uh, create. No, sorry, will be assigned with those values. Now to set up the simulation right now, uh, you have to prepare the tool chain. So to do that, let me go to options. So tools and options. EDA tools, and then specify this location. So this location is the model sim uh, location that was installed with the Quartus software, and it is located inside the Quartus folder. The model sim, and this part also. So this is parts where uh, executables are. So after you do that, this will be this configuration will be saved for all future projects. So we don't have to repeat this. Next, we create uh, a simulation file. So you right click on that uh, new thing, new blank uh, button, and then we create Verilog HDL file. Okay. Now, uh, for test bench, we do not need any input output ports, so we will uh, we will we will create it like that. So let's call it test bench uh, first implementation. We can have a brackets there for the work is also. Then we create signals that we need to connect with this design. This design has those signals. So I don't use uh, buttons. So I will, okay, I will keep I will keep them anyway. So we need signals to connect with those four input outputs of those of the signal. So we will I will I will use the same names we have there. So for inputs. Of the of the uh, modules that we are testing, we need to create a registers for outputs. We need to create uh, wire variables or wires. That means uh, egg clock. That's first. Then we have the key input. So I will call it reg one to zero. Here. Then 
another input is switches. Okay. Three two zero W wire for uh, maybe this. Next, we need to create an instantiation. So to do that, we will copy the same name that we have in the design. And then we call uh, insta instance one, and then we directly specify the names of the ports. So clock will be first. Because the first signal that is declared here is the clock. You see the name difference there also. Then comes the key. Then this LED. So I put LED here and switches. Now instanti instantiation is completed. Uh, I will click the save button. So this is TB. First implementation. Now, one thing one thing to note is here. Uh, keep in mind there is you will usually get warnings, errors uh, if you assign the value to output inside the always or instance. If you do something like always at College clock, as I will do this code now. Then uh, begin and LED, its value something like um, switches, just theoretically. If you do that, you will get you will get uh, error that LED should be a red type. Now, to do that, you can accomplish by either two options. First, you add reg keyword into the declaration of the output port. That's only for output ports. Or uh, you can create an uh, intermediate register. So by add for instance, reg 720 uh, LED reg. So what you can do is you will assign value to LED reg from switches. And then you do the assignment. Like that. So keep this in mind because you will mostly get errors for that. So if you want to assign to the output, you either have to make it a register or you have to use a register and assign it like that. Assign value to the author to that register and copy the value of that register to the output port. So you will you will uh, need to use that. So and now I don't need to fill it. All right. So we have the instanti instantiation here. Uh, now always keep in mind that when you declare the input ports, any question with that? Always keep in mind that when you uh, declare the inputs to the test bench, when I say, I mean, when you, in simulation, when you declare these signals that are then connected to the inputs of this test bench, you better always uh, to initialize that signals, those signals. So clock initial value should be zero, key initial value should be zero and this should be zero. So give initial values uh, officially zeros or you can use some other values also. But they need to have some value. Okay, so this part is done. This part is done. Now we need to, uh, we need to, to create now the uh, stimulus file. Stimulus file actually generates signals to the module. So to do that, we have show block. Um, 
now in initial block, uh, we we control how the inputs are generated in terms of time. So we can specify that this uh, button uh, or key was pressed, button was pressed at zero time, then released after one second, and then pressed again after 10 seconds. You can, you are controlling this input just like that. And then you are automatically observing the outputs. So what happened in, inside the design, inside this particular design that we are simulating. Now let's suppose, uh, let's suppose um, key got the value, uh, we can specify in binary also, like one one. So when the so when the configuration booted up after 100 nanoseconds, key was pressed. Both of the keys were pressed. But actually, we don't use keys there, but we can have it. We have the inputs. Then after 100 nanoseconds, keys were E pressed. So we E is stands for binary. Yeah, you know, I will copy this. Mm. I will open it here so it, yeah, I can zoom closer to this file. So I'm working in testbench first implementation. So we open this file. Now that's better. So I, here I said uh, he, uh, when the um, when the configuration boots up, 100 nanoseconds have passed, and then key was pressed, both of them, and then after after another 100 nanoseconds, all of them were depressed. Then we waited 200 nanoseconds, and switches got the value of. Uh, Zero one zero one zero for instance. Then they go to value like like that. Okay, now we will simulate that, and uh, also you will need see simulation for clock as well. Not in this case because we are not using clock. But uh, for the future of designs, you will always need to simulate the clock. Now here I'm saying that after this many time, after this time has passed, do this simulation. Simulation. So simulate the button press. I'm specifying when to do and what to do. So I'm doing exactly the same thing with the clock. I'm creating always clock while this is the initial block, right? So this is the initial block, and this is the always block. So just very simple, so begin and end. And I'm saying always block will execute all the time, and all the time he will perform this after five, five nanoseconds, clock will get the value of opposite of whatever it had. So if it was zero, after five nanoseconds, it will get one. Then after five nanoseconds from that, he will execute this code again. And clock again will change the value. It will become zero, then one, then zero and one, and so on. It will, it will happen forever. Uh, sometimes uh, to stop the simulation, automatically uh, they use finish. Uh, keyword there, or oh, stop. But we don't need that because we usually in alter in uh, this. What what's the name of that? In the simulation tool, we control how many nanoseconds we are simulating. Now test bench is complete. Hopefully we do we do not have the errors. So 
me go there. This is for loading the file. And now we need to do the simulation. To do the simulation, um, two things, two ways we can we can actually accomplish that. Uh, okay, first way. So first way is um, one second. Okay. The first way is in uh, processing, so in assignment, you go to settings and uh, you click the simulation part. Now, this is longer way, longer version. You can compile test bench, you can click this radio button there to compile the test bench. And uh, then click the test bench button there. Wow. Now, in that part, we will have new, and then uh, we have to specify the name of the test bench file. So, test bench first implementation. Okay, after I specify that from this button, I have to click add. Test bench name, okay. And the uh, test bench name should be the same thing. Okay. So after I do that, when I compile the design, the test bench will be executed uh, immediately after compiling the design file. Now, usually it takes a couple of minutes. We can check the percentage of the completion of this task. So after this compile design pr uh, process is completed, we have generated already the design, uh, the implementation file for this design that we will upload on uh, FPGA, and we will also uh, it will also launch the simulation. There are these warnings here we have. Uh, some of them are new for me too. But we will figure out what is what. Now it's in 80%. Let's wait a couple of uh, seconds. So this timing analyzer is important. Um, this shows us the results of the timing. So if we have some timing problem, it will appear here. So we have some problem there showing unconstrained input ports um, and un unconstrained output ports. We will deal with that later. And if we have different kind of errors, we will also figure out how to solve them uh, when we need when we have to. So um, actually this Simulation didn't launch for some reason. Compile test bench. Okay, it did not launch, so it, I think it's it's fine. It's fine. So. Uh, I think I missed something, but I don't remember what I missed right now. So I will switch to second version of uh, how to run the uh, simulation. So you click in this tab here and you switch to RTL simulation. Like that. 
and we also switch to files and select the test bench uh, there. So analysis and elaboration. So that's already a second ver second option, second version of uh, simulating. The first didn't work, and this is better also. The second one is better. So after analysis comp complete without errors, uh, we click the RTL simulation. Now you see this. This is open in the background. This uh, feather icon simulation tool. Now it's time to M. So this is called model sim. Model sim is the name of uh, third party tool that is that we implement in, in incorporated with partners. So usually you have this screen or you have that screen. Uh, so if you have this screen already, if you click the test bench, then you can also click inside of the values. And now in our case, this is already added to the waveform. If they are not added to the waveform, we can click the module name and you can select the signals with Control A and add to wave. But now we have the signals there. Okay, you see these buttons are disabled here. So that probably happened because I didn't have the finish uh, signal. Uh, so I clicked stop stop and then I will simulate for specific amount of time. So I will click restart, okay? And I will simulate for, okay, this is picoseconds. So we were talking about picoseconds before. So now that this is the thing we have. So after uh, one, 0 0.1 nanosecond, we change the value to one one that we actually wrote in the test bench file, then it turned back to the zero zero value. So key is actually working as it should. Next, let's proceed the simulation. So I will simulate uh, or and the picoseconds more. So you see what we actually wrote in simulation that after hundred um, picoseconds. So this were picosecond time. Um, this this were each each was picosecond time. So after hundred uh, hundred picoseconds. We change the value of the pattern, then we change it again. Then after uh, after 200 picoseconds, we change the value of switches, and you see LEDs change the value also. So if the switches go to the go got this value. LEDs go to the same value. And again, after 200 nanoseconds, picoseconds, we change the switch value again, and switch also changed it for its value. Now, uh, let's make sure there is no anything happening after that. And now let's suppose we need to change uh, the stimulus file, or we need to change something in the design. So in, in either case, we have, if you want to edit this file, or even if you want to edit this file, I do not want to wait so much time in launching the simulation. And I can avoid that also. For instance, I, I click another, uh, I change the switch again. And the next value is, is that.
then change it again and do this next slide. So instead of going through analysis and elaboration case and then launching the simulation and then waiting until this simulation is launched, I can directly not close the previous simulation in model sim. I can keep it open. And I can even tell you that this uh, <clears throat> model sim simulation is, uh, is a complete simulation tool. So you can, you can even not install Quartus and just have the model sim and you can uh, simulate simulate the design. <clears throat> so now to apply changes that we have in the Verilog file, you go click the library and click work and select the top module file that you are simulating. <clears throat> so this is the top module. This is the simulation file, test bench first implementation. And uh, then you click recompile. So this model scene compiles it by itself, without quarters. And uh, then click the same file, test bench first implementation, and click simulate. The operation, this operation will close the current simulation continue. Yes, of course. <clears throat> All right, so this is open. Then I will click eight wave again, and then uh, run this simulation for 1000 picoseconds. And you see this uh, third pattern and fourth pattern of uh, switches simulation is already uh, available in this wave form. So this is how you simulate. This is a crucial part. So you know, even I, even I am not the person to write the code of certain difficulty and uh, make it and uh, make. And know it's correct without simulation. I even I and every absolutely everyone who is uh, in this field, we always make mistakes, and then we have to observe what is the mistake to then correct it. Observation is very useful because we use the simulations to observe what kind of mistakes are we having. So this. Simulation is a crucial part of finding your bugs and problems and uh, fixing your design. Now I can, there are signals that are not declared. Right now we have the signals on this waveform that are declared into this test bench file. And if I click the instantiated module file, like, like that, so instead of that, I will select this. You see, name of the clock has been changed. So, so if I click it, I already see another names that are mentioned in this instantiated design. So in, if you want to observe internal signals of the design, you have to click the instantiation in this, in this window. Mm. So we can observe that they are actually having the same values. So this is from the test bench file perspective, and this is from the instantiated module perspective. You can check the names also. This is test bench first imp clock. This is test bench first imp, then inst one, then FJ clock. So this is internal signal of the design. All of these are are same. Now we have uh, we now we wrote the design. We know that simulation is correct. So I don't need the simulation anymore. What I need now is uh, to make sure I will put this on FPGA. Now about the FPGA itself, I will open the PDF file. 
So this is what we have. This is the SOC. So half of that is FPGA, half of that is microcontroller ARM. And this is uh, this is memory units. I don't know, flash memory probably. I don't, I don't know that. Now, what else do we have here? So this part here is LEDs. These are the two switches, two buttons that is available on FPGA, four switches. Uh, another buttons that is available for microcontrollers. So it's physically routed to the R microprocessor, not FPGA. So this is the buttons for that. Then this is the power source connector. This is USB connector to program. So the, the programmer is called Blaster 2 or something. So it's from Spartus. So they call it Blaster. So we connect our cable into this so into this port of socket. And this is a general input output GPIOs. And all accessible from FPGA part. And this is Ethernet. We will play with that. And uh, I don't know what, what, what are these connections. And this is USB OD, OTG cable and behind in the in the another side of this board there is micro SD card. Uh, the good part with this FPGA is it is it is used to uh, it is used to it is it's, it's an SOC. So let's start with that. SOC is able to SOC means there is a hard core, hard core uh, microcontroller uh, built in, and we have two of them. We have two microcontrollers available in uh, dual core microcontroller available in in this SOC. And uh, and good good part of that is we can have the C code running on both dual core ARM. I mean, C code, C++, C code uh, that is working with the FPGA. For instance, it is, we have a C code that is utilizing the FPGA design, FPGA design itself. So we have a FPGA design that is communicating with C code and doing something useful. We can have that, we can also, Boot Linux on dual core ARM that is also working with the design we create. And this is awesome part of SOC. It is the best part of SOC. In Linux, now we have a Linux where Linux just properly uh, working and also communicating with your FPGA and also having Ethernet and USB and so on. So it's just normal Linux with. Uh, the input and outputs we have there. Um, okay, this is for details of USB Blaster 2 is this port. This is 5 volts power source. And uh, on this HPS is the, in this microcontroller. So FPGA on the left side, the green ones is connected to FPGA itself, uh, the orange colored ports are connected to HPS. HPS stands for High Performance System. I don't know, probably. Anyway, it's connected to, it is physically connected to microcontrollers, uh, microcontroller pin. But I think it is also accessible from directly from FPGA. Um, or maybe not, not sure. Okay, this is the, this is nothing. So some details there and some what we have there. Okay, HPS is called, okay, still no explanation, but ARM Core Text 2, dual core ARM Core Text 
A9 is the HPS. Now, when we when we want to first boot into the development port, I mean, so when we want to program this development port, we have, we want to make sure the configuration is correct. So these switches are used to configuring how the development port should behave. From these switches, we can configure to, uh, for instance, now let's uh, boot from SD card or uh, let or boot for an SD card and boot Linux or boot from SD card and boot C code or just E whatever it is and uh, get the software from from this USB blaster. We can have we can set these configurations from these switches. They're very small switches. Uh, you cannot change it with, with hand, but you can use some tool. For our case right now, we need default configuration. Default configuration is used to program FPGA from USB blaster. So switches uh, pattern should be, uh, you see, you will see that. So switch patterns should be on, off, on, off, on, off. So this should be the switch pattern. By default, it should be like that. I still can make sure it's this one. Oh, no, nothing we need. Okay, yes, this is the HPS resets. And I don't know what is this, third decay, A2. And that's enough. Now, uh, we know the FPGA's configuration is correct. We set it up those switches. Now, before we connect to the um, connect to the computer, let's make sure the driver is installed, or we can connect it to the computer. We can go to device manager, and uh, it should be JTAG cables, and this should be available. If this is not available in your device manager, you can unplug the cable, install the driver like that. So let's say there is a question mark to the new device and this question mark, I mean unidentified uh, device is this USB blaster. If this is the one, uh, update driver, for instance, you click update driver, you browse computer, and then you select this location. The Quartus, then version, then Quartus, drivers, and USB cluster two. This is the look, not even that. You can specify this location. This location you specify for driver, and then uh, you press OK and the driver should be installed. Or you can directly go there and uh, just double click this exit file and it will install the drivers. So if one is the first version didn't work, try the second one. Or restart the computer, unplug the cables, and run the uh, executable file and so on. That is all the files you need for Windows 10 and probably for others also. So this should be installed. Now, let's say you have this, uh, you have this driver installed, you have the design ready, and then you switch to compilation and you say program device. So this window will open up and uh, in the first attempt, you will have nothing here. It should be empty or it should be something else. So you will have you will not have this name written there. So you click hardware setup after that, and uh, you have to select no hardware. So you will have like this. So you have to select the D 
uh, DSOC from this list and then click add hardware and it will appear here. So now the programmer will know that this is the device that is connected. For instance, I will remove the device right now. Which apparently I can't. I have to select this and then click add. Oh, I don't even need to add. So I have to just select this file and it will be enough. Then after I, uh, after I select this thing here, it should appear on this field and you click auto detect. And when you click auto detect, you select this uh, second one. You select the second one because that's the name of the device we have. We go to somewhere here. This is the thing we have. 5CSEMA4. 5CSEMA4. So you select this particular one. I don't know why do I see this or that, but I suspect this is, this is I don't know. I just don't know. But I see this. So I have to select the middle one, let's see. One that is uh, our device name. Click OK. Then uh, it will refresh this thing, click yes. Now to program the FPGAs instead of SOC HPS, I click this part, then I click edit and change file. Then this is the first implementation. Okay, this is the project directory we have. So I have now output files is the folder I need because this is where outputs generated outputs are located so i click output files and sof is the file name that was generated in xilinx it was bit file in altera we have this sof now this is selected and then i have to mark check mark this uh, checkbox program and configure so i click that and then I click start. And after it's finished, it's like 100% successful. Now, I already have this port connected to my PC. So it, that's why it uh, downloaded, it, downloaded the configuration. So as I check it myself on this development port, this is working perfectly. So I change the switch, LED value is changed. So what we wrote is correct. Now you can close and play with the design. Now I will stop the recording of this like full complete uh, part of how to getting up, getting this thing and running. So that's what, that's the first part. And then we have a little break.